Hey guys, well, I couldn't stay away because, well, I'm a little nauseous. Uh, gotta love that pregnancy vibe. But uh, I'm using my coat to prop my phone up, so. Anyway, who loves vampires? I know I do. I love a good vampire movie. But what if you're related to one? Well, technically, by marriage, I am. My husband is related to a woman back in, God, I don't even know what time period it was. It's an ancestor. I can just say that. She was called the Blood Queen. What she did was she would take virgins from the town, bring them in, say she's going to make a lady out of them, but then she'd kill them. She'd drink their blood and she'd bathe in it to try to keep herself young. Well, after a while, people pretty much figured out what she was doing. So, what they did, they walled her up in her bedroom. They sealed her bedroom up. You, she couldn't get out. Nobody could get in. She lived a little while drinking her own blood. So, yeah, there, there's a little bit of family history from my, my, my family. Uh, I know it's, it's really weird. Um, excuse me as I fix the phone again. Goofy stuff. Um... I'm a little sideways there. Eh. But yeah, I am related to a vampire. Go figure. Uh, hmm. Let's see, what else? Oh yeah, that's right. I could tell you about Bram Stoker's Dracula. Well, everybody knew him back then as the Impaler. So, here we go. This is Bronze Castle in Romania. This is what was actually thought of as Dracula's castle. In the gothic horror classic Dracula, the castle inhabited by its blood-sucking count sits on the very edge of a terrific precipice, like above a chasm where the rivers wind in deep gorges through the forests in a place called Transylvania. As the only castle in Transylvania, even vaguely fitting that description. Bran Castle is modern day Roman in modern day Romania attracts hundreds of thousands of tourists a year, wanting to sink their teeth into the chilling Dracula story. Built in the fourteenth century on a steep cliff on the strategically important Bran Pass, Bran Castle plunges visitors into an elaborate medieval world with its secret passageways tunnels, tunneled stone staircases, conical towers, and rooms stocked with antiques and armor. At night, the wind whips through the dense forest below. The bearskin-covered floors creak and the walls shudder, and it's easy to imagine the days when the castle served as a stopover for Vlad the Impaler, a warrior knight and hero to many Romanians and Bulgarians, who had an unsavory killing style. Just how connected to Bran Castle is to Dracula's castle invites debate. The book's edifice, like its menacing lord, comes from the imagination of Irish writer Bram Stoker, who never traveled to Transylvania and never visited Bran Castle. There's a, there's a speculation Stoker may have seen illustrations of it in an 1860s book about Transylvania and that Dracula could have been based in part on Vlad the Impaler. Scholars scoff at the comparison, saying Dracula's crumbling castle bears little resemblance to tidy Bran Castle, and that its location was probably inspired by a bare hilltop in the Alps. No matter how tenuous the links may be, visitors insist Bran Castle certainly has the feel of Dracul Dracula's haunts. You could feel the evil in the walls. You knew that you weren't alone, Canadian Tammy Varma told CBC News after winning a contest to spend Halloween night 2016 in the castle, which normally offers only offers daytime tours. We may have been the only physical guest there, but there were certainly invisible guests among us. Of course, some of her fear may have come from the bed arrangements. She slept in a coffin. And yes, I've heard of I've heard of this uh, contest that if you win. You go and spend the night in the castle. You eat there. 
uh, and you get to sleep in coffins. Sounds pretty cool to me. Uh, two other Romanian castles have at times been linked to the count. Excuse me. The 15th century moat ringed Hoyad Castle supposedly held Vlad as prisoner, and the crumbling 13th century Poneri Castle appeared in a Star's TV episode of Da Vinci's Demons about the Impaler. But research says Bram Stoker never heard of either castle. So there you go, a little, a little vampire history. <laughs> um, we'll go from vampire history. This is from the Queen Mary, Long Beach, California. How an 18-year-old firefighter known as Half Hatch Harry came to be crushed by a heavy door in the engine room remains one of many mysteries of the Queen Mary. The stately ship that carried troops, war brides, and celebrities from Hollywood's golden age in speed and style. These doors deep in the bowels of the ship take a full 60 seconds to shut completely. It could well be that poor Harry was as confused as anybody else about his demise in 1966, which many explain why he's still spotted hanging around below. He's seeking answers. The thousand-foot-long liner sailed the Atlantic from 1936 until 1967, when she was permanently docked as a tourist attraction in Long Beach's harbor. Those civilian and military passengers are said to be replaced by some 150 ghosts, giving this grand lady of the seas the label of the world's most haunted vessel. Bathing beauties in vintage 1930s swimsuits materialize around the first-class swimming pool. Little girls who supposedly drowned in the second-class pool have been seen playing together. One other fellow has been spotted wandering the main deck. The scariest place on board is cabin 340, in what is now a hotel, with reports of a toilet that flushed on its own. Flying bedsheets and the terrifying presence of a man warning to get out. Guests complained so much that the stateroom was closed to visitors and the room numbers were removed. And we go from there. Uh, let's see. Anybody want to hear about the Tower of London? <laughs> we'll do the Tower of London next. Once upon a simple and more brutal time, politics in Britain could be brutally simple. Anger a king, lose a head. Many of those on the losing side of a royal row round up on, wound up on the chopping block at the Tower of London. The luckier ones rotted in their cells. Built by William the Conqueror in 1078, on the banks of the Thames and expanded and modified over the centuries, the tower has served many purposes, from fortress to palace. These days, it's the keeper of the crown jewels and residence of the crown ghosts. King Henry VIII's second wife, Anne Boleyn, who bore him a future queen, Elizabeth I, but not a son, among other insults, real and invented, is said to walk the corridors minus, corridors minus her head which she lost in 1536 after going on trial for treason. Visitors also report the anguished sobs of Lady Arabella Stuart, who died in the tower in 1615. Arrested by King James, who worried that her marriage to six in line to the throne William Seymour threatened James's reign, Arabella escaped but was caught and incarcerated in the tower. She died because she refused to eat in her heartbreak over her never seeing her husband again. Then there are the spirits of the two princes in the tower, boys ages 9 and 12, who have been spotted scampering around in their nightshirts. The boys vanished from the tower in 1483, probably murdered to secure their uncle's hold on the throne. A box containing two small skeletons that could have been theirs was found under the white tower nearly 200 years later. Perhaps the most terrifying ghost, though, is that of the Countess of Salisbury, Margaret Pole, who died in 1541 in the worst possible way. 
ordered to be executed as an enemy of Henry VIII on the basis of evidence that was probably planted. A defiant Margaret refused to kneel for her beheading. The frustrated executioner chased her around the scaffold and hacked her apart in front of the horrified crowd. Listen for Margaret's screams still echoing through the tower. So, I will end this one, and I will be back with another video. Bye.